Now I'd like to talk about the relationship between interrupts, which we learned about a while ago, and debugging. We'll start with the simplest form, which is the interrupt 3, the breakpoint exception. This also has its own separate interrupt assembly instruction, int3, which has a one-byte opcode form, hex cc, whereas the normal interrupt is cd followed by some number for the interrupt number. So int3 is actually what debuggers are using when they say they're setting a software breakpoint, which is generally the default form of breakpoints. So here we go, the breakpoint exception or interrupt. It is of type trap, and you can see here it has the int3, not int space 3. So the first thing that happens when some debugger sets a software breakpoint, like Visual Studio, if you're just clicking off to the side, is that it's going to overwrite the first byte of the assembly instruction that corresponds to the line where you're trying to set the breakpoint or the address where you're trying to set the breakpoint. It's going to overwrite the first byte with hex cc so that when the processor would normally execute whatever assembly instruction is there, instead it will execute the int3 assembly instruction. It's going to have to update some sort of metadata list that the debugger itself keeps track of to figure out what bytes it's actually overwritten in order to know later on what byte it needs to put back in order to execute the original assembly instruction. Now once that int3 is actually hit, the debugger is going to look up the location. It's going to see, okay, there's a int3 at this specific address, and then it has to basically replace that byte, execute the assembly instruction, and then assuming that the person hasn't actually toggled off the breakpoint, assuming they didn't like undo the breakpoint, yet they're going to you know, write the breakpoint back there, and then they're just going to proceed and let the program run as normal. So we're going to do a quick lab that's going to actually try to show us and expose the duplicity of debuggers like Visual Studio in that this particular application, Proof Pudding, reads its own assembly bytes and prints them out to screen. So we will see specifically the debugger trying to hide from us the fact that it is inserted a CC. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Proof pudding is just a simple thing that calls an assembly function. And what that assembly function does is it takes the address of some label, blah. So it takes the address of blah and it moves it to RAX. So basically it's just returning the address of blah, which in so doing is essentially returning the address of this no-op instruction. Then up in the C code, it's going to say that the data pointed to by this address of blah that's coming back from within this assembly function is the following data. And it actually dereferences it as a byte pointer. So it's essentially going to treat the address of the noop as a byte pointer. It's going to dereference it. And so it's going to give us one byte at that address, which should be hex 90, because that's the value of a noop assembly instruction. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint before we actually walk into the code. And let's set a breakpoint at the end after the prints. Make sure you set it as a startup project. Make sure it's set to debugging. And then we go. We're going to step into it. You can see it's going to get the address of blah. And then the address of blah should just be this no op. And so if we just continue on, so we see printed out that at this address, the address of blah, 1a1a, the byte is hex 90. So that's exactly what we would expect to see because that is a hex 90 at that address. But now let's set a breakpoint right here. Let's set a breakpoint here. And what I'm telling you about software breakpoints is that the debugger is going to actually overwrite that hex 90 with a CC. And that's what's going to cause the breakpoint exception to fire and the debugger to be notified. And ultimately it will you know, stop in the debugger. So let's go ahead and run the debugger, continue on. OK, now it has hit this breakpoint. And so we want to see you know, whether or not this is hex 90 or whether this is CC. So we're broken right here right now. So we could just put in RIP. And that is the address 1a1a again. And you can see that it says 1a1a is 90. And also RAX is the value that's being returned for the address of blah. So we could put in RAX, and again, it's 1a1a, and it says it's hex 90. But when we continue, what we see is that it prints out at 1a1a is hex cc. 
So basically the debugger lied to us. The debugger said there was a hex 90 there in that memory address, but in reality there was a hex CC from the debugger itself. 